Um, Grace Halsell was a journalist and author. She's from Texas. She was born in Lubbock. And she started her journalism career almost straight out of high school in uh, Lubbock, Texas. She worked for the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Um, she started out in uh, the 1940s, and this was a time when there weren't many women in the newsroom. So she was a bit of a pioneer and, and was um, sometimes the only woman in the newsroom. Um, but she started out at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Uh, she went to Texas Tech University for a little while. She went to TCU. She um, and eventually attended the Sorbonne and Columbia University um, for some short courses. And um, she also became a reporter at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, which was the major newspaper here in Texas and had a wide readership all over the state. When she was at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, she actually became the first female reporter to cover the police beat. And um, she was actually working on that beat when she met her husband. Um, they had a brief marriage and divorced. And after her divorce is when she left Texas. She became a freelance reporter and she started out working in New York City but her reporting eventually led her all over the world. Um, doing freelance writing, she ended up writing articles for the New York Herald Tribune, the Houston Chronicle, the Times-Picayune, and then she also uh, took the opportunity to travel internationally, and she reported for a time in Japan, reported in um, Hong Kong, and she lived in Hong Kong and um, eventually ended up in South America where she worked for a newspaper in Lima, Peru for two years. After all of that uh, travel around the world, she ended up in Washington, D.C. She was working for the Washington Bureau of the Houston Post and that put her in contact with President Johnson um, who wanted to offer her a job at, in the White House as a secretary. And she said, I'm not a secretary, I'm a writer. So she uh, was given a job as a writer for President Johnson. And she wrote press releases and she wrote speeches and um, things like that. She worked at the White House for about three years. And then she was inspired to start reporting and writing on racial issues. And in the late 1960s, uh, the civil rights movement was a, a major issue in the United States. And um, she took uh, on probably the greatest story or the biggest story of her life. She wanted to write about racism from the perspective of African Americans. And she started working on a book that was inspired by John Howard Griffin's book, Black Like Me. Um, Grace took drastic steps to, um, to take on this story, and she took some medication that allowed her skin to become darker, and actually lived in Harlem and in Mississippi as a black woman to write her book, Soul Sister. Um, Soul Sister became a huge hit. It sold uh, over a million copies and was widely read at the time. And so she kept writing from this perspective um, of other people. She wrote a book called Bessie Yellow Hair from the perspective where she had gone undercover, so to speak, as a Navajo woman and wrote about her experiences working and living um, as an American Indian. And then um, she wrote another book called The Illegals. And she researched this book by crossing over the border with um, Mexican families who were coming into the United States. And um, so she spent the, the, a good part of her career writing these kinds of books um, where she really took on another persona and then wrote about that experience. Um, her autobiography is called In Their Shoes, and she documents 
everything in her life from her very unique childhood in West Texas to working in the White House, her marriage, and these um, journalistic assignments and books that she wrote. Um, and this book came out in 1996. In 2000, she passed away from um, treatment. She had multiple myeloma, um, and the, that was a cancer related to the medication that she took to darken her skin. Um, we have her papers here at TCU Library, and we have researchers come and um, do research on her work as a journalist and a writer. So um, these are some examples of documents we have in the collection. They're clippings of her articles that she wrote for um, the newspaper in Lima, Peru. And these are dated from the um, 1960s. But she did live in Peru from, for a couple of years and just worked on many different assignments there. Um, she was very much a working reporter. Um, I think sometimes the fact that there were not a lot of female reporters at the time gave her an, an entry and got her some attention that wasn't normally, um, normally given. So that may have helped her get some of these stories. But um, she just generally wrote on the happenings of Lima, Peru. Um, in 1965, she was working in the Washington Bureau for the Houston Post. And um, she was at a press event where President Johnson was actually at the event. He noticed her and, um, again, her being a woman, got his attention in a room full of male reporters. She was one female. And so he noticed her and uh, made a comment about her being a pretty little thing and um, tried to get her to work in the White House. And she writes about this in her book again, her experience interviewing with President Johnson and then her experience and her observations working for him in the White House. He wanted to hire her as a secretary, and she said, no, I am a reporter. I'm not going to be in the secretarial pool. Um, so he took her on, and she got to see the, the, the way he worked as president. And she, in her book, writes about her observations and her opinions on um, how he organized his office, things that he needed as president to kind of keep his confidence going. Um, the way he interacted with other women in the department and in the White House. Um, so many years later, she took all of the, those memories and wrote an unpublished manuscript. It's a fictional manuscript, but um, she's based it on Lyndon Johnson, and it's called Lyndon, Love in the Corridors of Power. And it's a historical fiction set in the White House with President Johnson as a character. And um, I think that it probably um, includes a lot of the actual events and things that she observed and things that she observed about his character. And again, it's never been published, but um, we do have it in her papers. And it's a pretty interesting read. She worked in the White House and she was, um, she found it difficult at times, not only because of President Johnson and the way that he ran his uh, executive branch and ran the Oval Office, but I think she also felt that her voice on certain issues wasn't being heard. She was very much against the Vietnam War, for example, and um, she witnessed a lot of things happening that just didn't sit right with her. Around this time, she read a book called Black Like Me by an author named John Howard Griffin. And in that book, um, John Howard Griffin had darkened his skin and lived with African Americans to write about that experience of, of being an African American man in the United States at that time. 
she read this book and it inspired her to, um, to do something similar. Um, she started a correspondence with John Howard Griffin and actually in her papers we have, you can see this is a pretty big extensive um, folder of correspondence. They maintained a friendship for many, many years. She wrote to him and told him that she loved his book and that she wanted to do something similar. And he said he had gotten a lot of uh, those kinds of, of offers and inquiries. How can I do this? And he didn't really respond favorably to them, but something about grace really um, made him believe that she could do this also. So um, this is a letter that she wrote to him offering to pick him up after they start corresponding. Uh, they make a plan to meet each other and uh, get to know each other. And it's on White House stationery. So she was actually still working in the White House when she began thinking of this idea of um, writing, living as a black woman and then writing about that experience. So this correspondence uh, goes on for many, many years. They were friends until his death and he had high praise for her um, and they talked, they had a very unique experience and they shared that experience. So they had a lot of, to talk about with each other. Um, so then uh, the papers also document the process that she used to darken her skin. And basically she took a medication called trisorolin um, that is usually prescribed to people who have the condition vitiligo where you have um, patches of skin that are a different color. And um, she took that medication and uh, basically sunbathed. She went to Puerto Rico and while taking this medication and just sunbathed all day. And eventually her skin became so tan that she felt she could pass as a black woman. And um, she started this journey by going to Harlem and living in Harlem for a time. And then she decided that she needed to go to Mississippi she ended up in Jackson, Mississippi, and worked as a domestic um, worked as a domestic worker, a housekeeper in Mississippi. And we actually have, let's see, I have some photographs of her after she darkened her skin. And this will kind of show you the difference. And This is a photo of her with one of her doctors. She was under medical supervision when she did this. And um, this is one of the doctors who prescribed her this medicine and monitored the changes in her appearance. And here he is. This is another image of him, Dr. Kenny. Um, one side effect of this, um, getting this excessive suntan was that she got a lot of blisters and especially blisters on her feet. So he, this photo, he's examining her feet. Let's see. I think the rest of these are just sort of general images of her. Um, this one going off topic a little bit, but this is an image of Grace in 1951 in a helicopter in East Berlin, and that was one of the 
the stories that she worked on. Um, she took advantage of the fact in World War II that a lot of men were not in the newsroom and um, made a name for herself during that time. And then in the 50s, she just decided she was going to go to Europe and start reporting and um, sending stories back to newspapers, and they would publish them or not. And so she got to ride in one of these helicopters in Eastern Europe. Let's see. This is an image of her on a cotton plantation in Peru. Again, you could see from the previous folder that she just wrote about any and every topic that, that came across her um, desk in Peru. And I believe this is, yes, this is her as a correspondent in Washington. And you see there, I think, is maybe one other woman in this photograph in the press pool. Um, but she's here reporting on the inauguration in 1965. And this eventually led her to working in Lyndon Johnson's White House. And then this is also um, just kind of a fun image that shows off her adventurous spirit from her young age. She was 16 in this shot. She was Miss Lubbock and um, presented, uh, represented her hometown in a rodeo in Stamford, Texas. So let's see. Um, so while the, this folder of material, she kept extensive notes when she was uh, living in Mississippi um, while she was researching her book. And so we have a lot of notes from that time period. And it, it consists of interviews that she did, transcripts of interviews. And then also in this folder are two notebooks that she kept. Um, that she kept notes in of her research for Soul Sister. And especially this one, um, it contains a lot of plans that she had, names of contacts that she had in Mississippi, people that she could um, could interview and people who would help her. She, living as um, a black woman in Mississippi, she, she did experience discrimination and she did not have any friends or family really to rely on. So this was another travel that she did on her own. So whenever she could make a contact or, or get to know someone, um, she would keep a note of that. So she started out in Jackson working for a couple of families as a housekeeper and then uh, went to other locations in the state to sort of gauge what conditions were like. And many times the reception from people working in the civil rights movement, um, they were open to talking with her, but it was not a safe situation for them to really uh, create a strong bond with her. She was traveling around um, mainly because if she stayed in one place too long and people, uh, the authorities or people in the Ku Klux Klan would discover what this woman was doing and the contacts that she made, it put herself and um, her African American contacts into a lot of danger. So that was one reason that she, she did this for six months and um, did not stay in one place for very long when she was doing it. But after this uh, assignment was finished, she came home and um, wrote her book, Soul Sister. When it was published, it was a great success. And so she took that success and that format of becoming another person to investigate discrimination. Um, she did that with American Indians and Native Americans and um, illegal immigrants coming across the border from Mexico. Um, 
We, we do have researchers who use these papers to research Grace and her author, authorship of these books. And um, I don't know if her methods would be looked on very favorably <laughs> right now. Um, but at the time, I think she had the intention of trying to bring to light these issues. Um, there has been, you know, some criticism of her books because she she darkened her skin to be another race and pass as another race, and that's um, a fairly controversial thing to do. So, um, you know, we're we're happy to um, have people research in these papers and kind of analyze her thoughts and, and feelings behind that and why she did it and what benefit it, it could have served. I think that Grace Halsell definitely saw herself as a woman in a man's world and she, she understood and noticed the discrimination that she experienced. She had um, a strong adventurous spirit and she pushed back on that on that discrimination as much as she could to become a journalist um, and really still during a time when there weren't a lot of female journalists she didn't let that hold her back or what society thought women should be doing she didn't let that hold her back after her marriage broke down, she realized that maybe she wasn't cut out for marriage and family and didn't, um, didn't dwell on that too much. She was heartbroken by it, but she, she wanted to be a reporter and she really followed that passion all over the world. And um, she could recognize and understand that she was breaking those barriers and was proud to do it, but um, always realized that she was going to have to fight to to break through those glass ceilings.